Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do, the usual disclaimers and the usual rant. So, first off, you are going to see the link to this article. Stupid, we're getting around to read here. Right there in the description box, it's going to be alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Oya's massive archive on the subject and the templates, you know the drill. Sign your name, click on your senator, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org at shot the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, I was about saying, use the headphones, all right? And it is 4.56. I am freaking brain dead. And, uh, yeah, so if I stumble over my words, apologies in advance, you know the drill, right? Also, folks, keep your fingers crossed for me. I finally spoke with my manager and told him, dude, the cell thing, like, I'm getting overstressed and I'm getting real close to autistic burnout. I think I need to get move over to customer service. So he's going to speak to some people, see what that would all entail. So please keep your fingers crossed for me, okay? Please. I need out of cells for the sake of my sanity. Alright, so this is an op ed extreme rhetoric cloud shock debate. So here we go. What is with this particular dot org here and being all for the JRC? Because Matthew Israel does shit through them too. I would like to know, but moving on. It's by Taylor Shields. And this was. As individual is a student or was of the Brandeis University independent student newspaper since 1949. And this was published back in 07. So, another person who doesn't know what the hell they're talking about, probably. Maybe. We'll see. Excuse me, folks. Still having allergy issues. Ugh. Spring in Missouri sucks in his pure misery. Okay, moving on. The actions of Brandeis' students against the Judge Rotenberg Center have crossed the line. Oh, here we go. So we're going to blame the advocates, folks. Okay, so let me prep you in advance. This is some of the shit we get to deal with every day and have for decades. During their... Tabling in Lower Usden, the group advertised in large, bold lettering across the banner, Stop the Torture of Children. Furthermore, at the table itself, literature presented by the group, as well as the statements of the members themselves, attempted to compare the group to the alleged torture prison in Abu Ghraib by using gruesome political cartoons from Mother Jones magazine to augment their comparison. You can already see they're full of shit, right? These articles, the evidence, have been around since the 70s. But upright citizen here is going to tell us, well, we're all wrong and I'm an idiot. Okay, Karen, bring it on. Aversive therapy is the use of negative stimuli, such as mild electric shocks used at the Judge Rotenberg Center to condition the behavior of an individual. Although the merits of the therapy are debatable and its use rightly controversial, a versor shock is not tortured by any reasonable use of the term. It actually is, Karen. You see, when you punish someone for acting as their neurology tells them to act, and you then punish them for it, how does that help it? Because punishing them for acting as our brains are wired to 
Kicking our ass for it is not going to help anything. That's essentially stop doing what you're doing or I'll kick your ass. Has that ever worked for you? Has that ever worked for anyone? Really? This goes back to the old corporal punishment arguments that we've been all having for years. Remember? It's treating the symptoms, not the problem. And why the fuck are we punishing disabled people for being disabled? Why are we not finding what's causing and triggering the behaviors and providing reasonable accommodations? Oh, but this student wants to be head jackass. So let's see what other epiphanies he has to give to us peasants. You know, someone who's never fucking actually worked in the field. Torture is the use of extreme physical or psychological pain as a means of interrogation or for the purpose of cruelty. B-S-A-R-J-R-C not only uses this term incorrectly, but in doing so insults the entire Brandalis community. Rather than present the community with evidence, research, or even the truth, B-S-A-J-R-C is employing over-the-top, deliberately misleading propaganda to inflame and confuse the community. Is it? Tell me, Taylor, did you ever look at the evidence? What's on those flyers is the same massive archive that we use on this channel every day. They are independent investigative reports. It's not just us advocates saying, well, we don't like it. Are you going to tell me you, a student with no experience working in mental health whatsoever or in the developmental disabilities field, are you going to go ahead and tell us that you know better what torture is than the special repertoire on torture from the UN? Got some balls, kid. I'll give you that. In defense of BSARJC's actions, Liza Brennan09 stated in an interview, we're trying to get an extreme reaction out of people because we think this is an extreme issue. Thank you, because it is torturing people for being disabled. Kid, do you know what they do in this school? It's not exaggeration. We're not trying to blow it up more than what it is. We are going off fucking court records and in evidence gathered by independent investigations. It's like dealing with age stands. I swear to God. I swear to fucking God. You all want to buy this shit so bad that even when hard cold evidence is like slammed on the table in front of you, you're going to tell me it's lies. I don't understand this. I, I, I don't want to think uh, everybody that's neuro neurotypical is completely batshit insane, but, like, people like this aren't helping the case. She went on to say that once BSAJRC had a student's attention, they would offer evidence of their claims if that student asked for it. It is not enough, however, for a group to offer evidence only after inflaming the passions of its audience. Regardless of the quality of the evidence or objectivity of the audience, any viewing of that evidence will be inherently prejudiced by the presentation of the treatment as torture. Because it is. Because it is. Do you, Taylor, here in 2022, do you, Taylor, think that it is okay after the Andre McCollum video came out that a kid be strapped helpless on a four point board, face down with a helmet over their head, obscuring all sensory with white noise and then shocked 31 times at 45 milliamps, barely below the lethal limit. Because it's not just propaganda kids. We've got 
video evidence, physical evidence, medical records, shockable offenses, sheets. It's all there in the description box. See, I come with receipts. The question is, are people like this willing to view them? Or are they just going to view them and say, oh, but that's not true. They like to throw around that we're prejudice, bias. It's the same shit AH stands like to use. But they never debate you on the facts. Just believe, believe the professionals. I don't just believe anybody. I haven't since I was a child. Just say it. Regardless of the quality of the evidence or the objectivity of the blah, 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 blah. It is unfortunate that BSJRC are choosing to lead skip with scare tactics because the evidence the group actually has to offer is well-researched and compelling. Brandeis is a high-level university, and if its students are concerned about the JRC, they are intelligent enough to examine the evidence objectiv objectively, but refusing to present us with that evidence in an unbiased manner. BSA JRC have shown very little respect for the student body. Let me tell you a little something, Taylor. The reason why we brought up the most extreme cases is not because there's little evidence to back it up. There's plenty. But because we've been trying to get your fucking attention since 1986 and you all don't listen. The media, you people out in the world, we've been trying to tell you what's happening to these kids. But you all never want to listen. You never want to listen. You jump on it in 2012 when that video went viral and then not much longer, you didn't hear anything about it anymore. And ever since the DC circuit overturned the FDA ban on this treatment, we have been fucking fighting to get everyone and their mother to get this into the media to save these goddamn kids and nobody listens. We don't do this and show you the most extreme cases of what happened to those kids because we like it. But because we have to do something to get you people to realize what the hell has been going on at its school since the inception. How many kids have to die? How many kids have to be permanently traumatized? How many kids have to be damaged by this school for people to care enough to act? That's the question I've been asking for over a decade. So you tell me, Taylor. But sorry, moving on. In addition to being wrong in their own regard, the actions of the BSA JRC also threatened a set a dangerous precedent in the Brandis activist tradition. Oh, fuck me. Propaganda presents a great temptation for any activist group as it garners an impressive response from students. However, any gains made by manipulating public sentiment or using scare tactics are made at the expense of the community's sense of trust. Tell me, if, is me bringing up the extreme cases over which I have evidence in order to get people to understand what's going on a scare tactic? Maybe. But it happened. And it got your attention for a short time in 2012, didn't it? If we're going to change something, yes, we do have to shock you. Because guess what? The truth is shocking. The truth is terrifying. This place is hell on earth. And you are goddamn right that I am going to boost the stories of the victims of this school. 
in order to bring this place crashing down like it deserves and get every last student out of there. But moving on, I'll have to finish this up here. Our university is one that prides itself on examining the objective truth of a situation, truth even unto its innermost parts. This motto is reflected well in the groups such as the Student Anti-Genocide Coalition, the members which pride themselves, and rightly so, of presenting the reality of a genocide and Darfur using objective evidence. What the hell do you think we have, Karen? Evidence that we have gathered in that massive archive was gathered by independent investigative groups. We didn't go grabbing it on our own with a preconceived bias. It was gathered by the New York State Department of Special Education, by independent investigations, by their own people in the state of Massachusetts, including Desi. It's the records for the court cases in California and in Rhode Island. Get a hold of yourself there. Whatever one's opinions on aversive therapy, it's important we do not, as a computer, support BSJRC until they are willing to treat us with respect and lead us with the truth as it is, not the how they that will believe it will be the most digestible. I find this student extremely arrogant, extremely naive, and extremely full of themselves. To sit there and try to dictate to those of us who have been fighting this hellhole for God, eons at this point, and try to tell us how we're supposed to conduct ourselves is the absolute height of arrogance. Here's what I think the fact of the matter is. A flyer is a tiny little piece of paper. You're not going to be able to fill out all the information and evidence that we've had from it. Independent investigations and court cases going all the way back to the goddamn 70s. And a little flyer. It's not going to happen. The flyer is there to get your attention, to let you know of something that is going on. And like most activist groups in the world, yes, probably even their genocide group, you go to the meeting in order to obtain more information. That information gathered on that archive. And yes, Taylor, it's objective. It presents both sides, whether you want to admit it or not. People like to sit here and blame us advocates. We don't understand. We're presenting the most extreme cases. That's not what happens all the time. Because to admit it is, to admit it's going on all the time, every day while we speak. I don't know if it horrifies them or if they in their arrogance just think that we're just wrong or they think, well, how else are you supposed to control them? But whatever it is, I do hope Taylor has grown up since they wrote this article. And on that note, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this topic. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So I do hope you hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. Please let me know how you feel. I feel like it came off as extremely arrogant. On the, on the surface level, it seems reasonable. But that's what they do. And then they use it to discount every single thing we say. You notice on the outside, they say, but it's not torture, though. 
Ah, uh, but the UN Special Repertoire on Torture begs to differ. But let me know in the comments. And as always here, folks, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.